Welcome to chapter 10 of the Ray Marching Shader in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. In this final chapter of the free series I will teach you how to add support for multiple colors in the shader. We will use the distance field from the previous chapter and be able to set a color for the ground and a different color for each of the spheres in the scene. We can then even blend between the colors where the spheres smoothly blend into each other. If you find the contents of my tutorials helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you enable me to continue creating these for my peers and you get access to the tutorial source files and exclusive content. Special thanks to Andrew Leboy, Devin De Dude, Derek Vechter, Patrick Nugent and Asperdine. Up until this point, we've shown the shader with one color for the entire scene. We do have implemented shadows, ambient occlusion and reflection to create a more convincing scene, but multiple colors will enhance the scene immensely. We want to be able to tell each object in our distance field to have a specific color. So let's open up the shader and create support for that. Let's start by adding a couple of variables that we can publicly set in the inspector. So underneath color we're going to change main color to the ground color. Now besides the ground we also have 8 spheres in our scene and we want to set all the spheres to a different color. So I'm going to create a uniform fixed for and we'll call this the sphere color and we're going to make an array out of this and the array length is going to be 8. If you create an array in the shader you have to set a fixed size you can't change it later so you have to think about how long the array has to be so in this case 8 for each sphere in the scene. Now we're going to add a third parameter which is a float and we'll call this the color intensity so uniform float color intensity. Now we have to implement the colors in our distance field so let's scroll down to the distance field function. At this point the distance field returns a single float value that tells us the volume of the shapes we've created. For each shape that we create we don't just want to return this value but also a color. A color consists out of three channels RGB, red, green and blue. To make this support colors, we are going to return a float4 instead of a single float. The RGB or XYZ channels will be about the color and the A or W channel will be the distance. So now that we've changed this float to a float4, we need to change all of these to a float4 as well. And this as the plane is all about the W value, so we need to make this a float4. So let's say float4 and its RGB values is going to be about the color so let's get the ground color tell its RGB channels let's do a comma here and now for the fourth value will be the SD plane so let's close this one off now let's do the same with the sphere so let's create a float 4 and this is going to be a float 4 of which the first channels is going to be the sphere color which is an array and this is the array position 0 because it's the first sphere dot its RGB values comma and we'll put a parentheses around this same thing for the sphere add in the for loop so make it a float 4 it's going to be a float 4 and we're going to get here the sphere color again with the position in the loop dot RGB comma and close this one off now for the next line we're using the operator union smooth here and the union smooth is using a float and a float value and another float value but these have become a float 4 value so we need to change our operator to work with a float 4 so let's go to the distance functions and here we've got the op us and we're going to change this to a float 4 and this one to a float 4 as well and now that we've changed these two to a float 4 instead of a float this equation is not working anymore because it's requesting the d2 and d1 float of its w value so we have to specify that that it's only taking its w value so dot w and dot w here as well dot w and dot w 
Now this is lerping only on the distance and not on the color. And we also want to lerp the color in between of these. So let's change this instead of return. We're going to make this a float and we'll call this distance or dist. And that is going to be this. And now let's also create a flow three and we'll call this the color. And that is going to lerp as well. But this is going to lerp for the color. So we're going to get d2 dot RGB to the one dot RGB by the float H. Now we need to return this entire thing. So we're going to say return a float for of the color and a dist. And I almost forgot this, but we need to change this float to a float four and then save the script and go back to the Raymar shader. Now at the end of this distance field, we're returning it with an op union and not with an op union smooth. So we also have to change the op union. So let's go to the distance field and we need to change the op union. And we're going to change this to a float four, float four, float four. And instead of returning the minimum of D1 and D2, I'm going to change this to an inline if statement. So we're going to say that d1.w is less than d2.w. Then we're going to return d1 and else we're going to return d2. So now let's save that and go back to the Raymart shader. Now that we've changed the distance field function to a float four, we need to change all the different references that we have to the distance field to its W value. So let's change that. Let's go to the normal and you see here some references to the distance field and we're going to get the W value of that. So let's get it also only here and here and this one as well. Dot W and dot W. Now let's scroll down to the heart shadow and we're going to change this one to dot w as well. Now at the soft shadow, we're also going to change this one to dot w. Now let's go down to the ambient occlusion and we're going to set this to dot w as well. And now we arrive at the shading and in the shading, we also need to get the color because now we just set the color to the main color dot RGB, but that one doesn't exist anymore. So let's make a new input for the shading and we're going to get an input of a fixed tree and we'll call that C for color. And we're going to set the color to become C.RGB and we're going to multiply this by the color intensity. Now let's scroll down to the ray marching. And at this point, the ray marching is giving a Boolean true or false if it hits anything and it's giving a position with the in out, but we also want to get the color. So we're going to make another in out statement. So we're going to say in out fix three and we'll call this the color for the distance color. Now in the distance field, we're making D become the distance field output. But as this is a float four, we're going to change this into a float four. And because this has become a float four, we're going to do the if statement of D dot W. And then we're going to set the D color fix three to the RGB values of D. So we're going to say D color is D dot RGB. And not to forget the last line T plus is D is becoming T plus is D dot W. Now let's scroll down to the frag. Now, just as we did for the in out of the hit position, we're also going to create a fix three for the D color. And in the ray marching function, we're going to send this D color. So now after this line has run, D color has become the color from the ray marching distance field. So now we can use the D color to send it to the shading. So a comma behind this normal and we're going to send D color to the shading. 
Now let's do the same with our two reflections. So we've got the ray marching here and we're gonna send the color here and to the shading we're gonna send the color again and here as well the color and to the shading the color. Now that should be all so let's save the shader and go to the ray march camera to implement the variables for the color. So let's create a new header and we're going to call this the color. Let's create a public color and we're going to call this the ground color. Now to assign the eight different colors for the spheres, I'm going to create a public gradient because that's a little bit easier to set all these colors at once. So sphere gradient. Now let's create a private color array for the actual colors. So I'm going to create a private color array and call this sphere color. And that is going to be a new color array by the length of eight. And let's create a public float for the color intensity. And we're going to make that a range between zero and four. Now let's scroll down to the on render image and we need to set a color so let's copy this line and we're going to set the color of the ground color to become the ground color. Now we also need to set the color intensity so let's get a float and we're going to set the color intensity And we need to set the color array. So let's copy this line, paste it, make this an array. And we're gonna set sphere color array to become sphere color. Now we still need to set all the colors of sphere color to the colors of the gradient. So we're gonna create a little for loop. So in the for loop for each of the sphere colors of its position in the loop, is going to be the sphere gradient dot evaluate and which position do we want to evaluate 1f divided by 8 multiplied by i oh and I think we deleted the main color so we also have to remove this line about setting the color of the main color because that doesn't exist anymore and with that in place let's save the script and go back to Unity. Back in Unity, we still have to set the values of the colors. So let me select the ground color, and when I change the color of the ground, you can see that only the ground is affected. Now I can choose here a gradient. I already got some gradient presets. And now all the colors are applied to the spheres. As you can see, if I change it to a different gradient, it will apply it to all of the different spheres. And you can see that the reflections are also taken in the colors. Now I want to quickly change one thing to the distance field and that is to make the ground also smooth with the spheres. So let's go to the shader and I'm going to change this RPU to RPUS and we're going to use the same value from the sphere smooth. So let's save that and go back to Unity. And now you can see that it's also blending in. So when I increase this smooth, you can see that it's blending with the ground. So let's put it a little bit lower. Now we got these nice little hills there. So actually put this a little bit higher and then see if we can create something cool, um, make them a little bit smaller, yep, cool. I think this is just about the same as from the intro, 
Maybe the shadows are a little bit different. So let's change the intensity of the shadows a bit more. And make them more uh, hard shadow. Oh, and one more thing on the colors, they are also blending together. So if I change the degree of rotation here, you can see that these are really blended as a rainbow together. This tutorial series is the most comprehensive free video course on ray marching, but we've only scratched the surface of the possibilities. I will continue teaching on ray marching with advanced ray marching videos that will become available exclusively for patrons on my Patreon. Thank you for following this tutorial series. I will continue creating new high quality tutorials on audio, algorithms and shaders for Unity. Feel free to share this tutorial with your peers and to stay updated to new released videos, subscribe to this channel. Happy coding!